Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are on uh, using intercept form on page 265 of your student journal, section 8.5. Some of you didn't know what page, now you know. You know it's half the battle. What I want you to do is work with your groupies and go ahead and answer the questions on page 265 and the top of page 266, which is the, the rest of exploration one. Okay? So go ahead and work together. Okay, now, I've heard a bunch of people... Kind of, I mean, I won't say they're whining, but they're a little frustrated. Um, now, gra the gra each graph represents either this form or that form. Now, I'm hoping at least you would be able to go, I know that graph A goes with, let's call this positive form or negative form. Tell your neighbor why I'm calling this one negative and this one's positive okay so volunteer raise your hand please yes Sarah good. an invisible positive sign there and a negative sign there good and the negative tells us what raise your hand please yes Kellen the graph is going to open down. Therefore, I should be able to look at each graph and go, hey, this one goes with positive or negative? Positive. This one goes with negative. This one goes with positive. Are you positive? Okay, this one goes with? This one is? And this one is? Negative. Negative. Quit being so negative. So, this one is? Positive and negative. Now, Hey, are we good there? All right. That did not actually help us write the function. It just told us that, hey, this one goes with this function, and that one goes with that one. But please note that f of x is going to be, as, it's going to be part of your function. And the other value that is going to be part of your function is what? Okay, which other variable up here have you seen in every function? X. X. So X is not going to become a number. It's going to be a variable in our function. We also know that because it says F of X. Okay? Therefore, we need to know what P and Q is. What they are. Okay? P and Q, this is called intercept form. So if something is intercept form, that means it's probably where something intercepts something else. My guess would be it's where my graph intercepts something. What would it intercept? Yeah. The x-axis. Okay. So where does this graph intercept the x-axis? Logan? One and two. And it's positive one and positive 2, but please keep in mind that if I am dealing with an intercept, it is where y equals, so like this actual coordinate of 1 is what? 0, zero 1. You sure it's 0, 1? No, yeah, one. thank you. It's 1, 0. Okay? 1, 0. And this one is? 2, 0. That means f of x when those are 0, f of x equals? f of x, same thing as what? Same thing as y. Okay? So if I said, just, just for the sake of this problem, if I said, let's kind of ignore that equation there for a minute. If I said f of x equals 0, and I have x and something, and x and something, Okay, these two things are multiplying to make zero. My answers need to be one and two, right? Okay, what does this have to be in here to get one? Yes, x minus one, right? Because x minus one equals zero. Remember factoring? Okay, and what about this? Negative two. Minus two, okay? Therefore, when I'm going back over here, this is x minus 1 and x minus 2. 
That is my equation. Okay? I want everyone to write the equation for letter B now, please. Hey, volunteer, tell me what they got. Giannis. Giannis. All right, well done. Yeah, the only thing that changes is negative, right? It's still 1 and 2. Remember, you guys, one way to think about it is just whatever you put in there is opposite, right? So we're at positive 1, so that needs to be x minus 1. We're at positive 2, that needs to be x minus 2. Very well done. Uh, just so we know the scores right now, you guys have 3, you have 2, you have 2, you have 3. Okay? Yeah, you guys know. You know, don't even act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay? Go ahead and write your equations for C, D, E, and F or Wait, what are they doing? Square root of the answer. Come on now. Okay. Hey, um. Answer. I got two right. You said negative three. You said it wrong. You said negative three trying to throw, throw me off here. All right. Hey, um. Should we leave it like that? What's x minus zero? Zero. Good, that's just x. So we'll go x and x minus 3 like that. This part becomes just x. What? Yeah, that's what. Shoot. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put up the other answers here. Letter D. Okay, so it's negative 3 and 0. Letter E, we have 0 and negative 3. So that's x plus 3 and negative x out in front. Sarah? Yeah, I probably want to get rid of those parentheses, especially if you're going to be inputting that stuff in the computer, right? Okay. And you guys with your Chromebooks open, close them. Yeah, guys. <laughs> Thanks for emphasizing that there, Jonathan. All right. There we go. You did say it out loud, just in case you are wondering. All right. Letter G. There, we got it. And letter F. H. Yep, letter H. That's what I meant. Okay? That's counting backwards. Yeah, what's wrong with this one? Good job. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on the bottom of the page there. Hey, on the bottom of the page, I want you to go through those questions. Answer number two and three. Talk about it. Work together. Okay? Just a couple minutes. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what are some characteristics of the graph? Sir, it will open up if A is positive. So if A is positive, it will open up. Yes? Good. It intercepts the points. The graphs intercept the x-axis at P and Q. Okay? Um, letter A. What does, uh, does changing the sign of A change the x-intercepts? Gilly? Will that change the intercepts, though? Will it change where it crosses here? So they're saying if I make this value up here negative. So if we make this one negative, it's not going to change our intercepts. It will change the y-axis or the y-intercept though. 
right? So like if you look, if we were to look back to our first two graphs that had the exact same intercepts, it's just the A term, one was positive, one was negative. In this one, the intercepts are still one and two as they are here, okay? The only difference is A is negative, A is positive. However, the Y intercept went from two to negative two. Okay, so that changes. So the Y intercept will change, however, the X intercepts will not. Okay. Okay. Hey, we're going to be done with that. I want you guys to take a look at your student journal. Okay. Page 268. I want you to go ahead and answer questions one and two. Hey, sounds like we're about done. What's the x-intercept here? Negative two. And? And four. Okay. So we have the x-intercepts. What's the axis of symmetry? x equals one. How is it uno? Hey, Mercedes. How did I get one, volunteer? Okay. Find the number that's in the middle. So if I were to just do a quick sketch of this graph, okay, and I have no idea exactly where where everything is, but that's negative two and that's four. Halfway between negative two and four is my axis of symmetry, right? Halfway in between is. Is one. Okay. Good job, Kai. So you could, I mean, mathematically, you could just say negative 2 plus 4 divided by 2. Take the average of those points. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. X equals 1 is my axis of symmetry. In fact, if you were to look on page 267 of your student journal, that's really what kind of they go through when it talks about graphing these. The first step after you find your intercepts, is to get that axis of symmetry. Okay? All right. Good? Hey, I'm going to let you guys do number two on your own. I won't talk to you unless you take your earbud out. Huh? I didn't hear you. What? I know. What's up? Oh, I thought you were talking. You were what? <laughs> All right. Hey, number number three. I want you guys to graph that one. There's my X and Y axis. Okay. <laughs> All right, Tyler, what do we have here? Negative five, negative one. So negative one and... Okay. Lost track of my counting there. Negative five. Hey, axis symmetry is right in between, which is x equals negative three. Now I'm going to keep showing you this method: negative five plus negative one divided by two. And the reason I'm showing you that is because when you do your online line work, you're going to see it like this as well. When you look at your textbook, you're going to see this this format. So that is negative three. That's your axis of symmetry. Okay. Now, you can't graph it yet because you need to find. We know A. A is here. You need to know the vertex. But we know the x value of our vertex is? Negative 3. Negative 3. Plug it in. If I plug in negative 3 up here, what's negative 3 plus 5? 8. No, I mean <laughs> two, 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 two. two, with enthusiasm, and negative three plus one. Negative two. Negative two times two is negative four. That is our vertex. You plug in your x value to find that vertex. Now, I am not going to be too picky about this. However, to do an extremely accurate graph, you should probably calculate that point and that point. 
Now, if you know how to graph using patterns, you just go over one and up one. Because A is 1. Same A value. Okay? That being said, we can draw our graph. that part up there. Really hard time with that. Okay. Pay attention. There we got it. Tell your neighbor the domain and range. Domain R numbers. Domain is R real numbers and the range is Y is real Okay, volunteer, domain. Cassie. Cassie's got it, all real numbers. Range, volunteer. Mercedes. Y is greater than or equal to negative 4. It's always, it's always that Y value there. Okay? Very good. Any questions? All right, I want you to try number five. Okay, there are really two ways to solve this. One way is to factor. The other way is to just solve for x when y is zero. So if I were to say y equals zero, and I go x squared minus four, the first step would be to add four. Get x squared equals four, and then I take the square root, x equals square root of four, when we put a square root symbol in, and there wasn't one to begin with, what do we have to put out in front? Which means our answer is plus minus, plus minus, not plus two, okay, plus minus two. Okay, that's one way to solve. The other way to solve is to actually factor it as, can anyone tell me what it factors to? Uh, x plus two, uh, x plus two, x minus two, that is the difference of two perfect squares, okay? And that would give you your negative 2 and your positive 2. All right? So from that point, we now need to graph. Since we're at positive 2 and negative 2 and it's opening up, I'm going to go ahead and put my grid right about in the middle. Okay? You could have it. Actually, on my answer key, I have it one off that. But. Okay? So we've got that. Yeah, yeah. The axis of symmetry then is it's x equals zero. I know I'm getting really picky, but you got to have x equals. Okay. When I put zero in, zero minus four is negative four. Remember, this is our c term. It just moves our graph down. Okay. Our a term is one. Therefore, we go over one up one. And Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff. That is the horrible graph right there. Don't do that. I thought you said curtain chow. Hold on. Let me uh, put let me put a better graph. There we go. Kirchhoff, not curtain chow. Okay. Hey, domain, all real numbers. Range y is greater than or equal to four. Negative four. <laughs> Okay, everyone rate themselves one to five right now. Six. Okay, five you got it, one you don't. Okay. I want you to turn to page 269. Top of page 269, answer question number seven, please. Those of you struggling with this, here's your start. You're finding the zeros. Yep. That's where y equals zero. Okay. That means you are now solving for x. In this problem, you don't have you only have one x, so you can just move things away from x. That's one route to go. Okay? So if you wanted to, what would I do first? Uh, plus six. Plus six. Then what? Divide by six. Now what? Yeah. Square root. Plus minus root of 1 is? 
One. Plus, no. minus. Okay. That's pretty easy on that one. This one, not so easy. If you set that equal to zero, what do you have to do first on this problem? Mercedes? Yeah, you can use the diamond thing. And Gunner wore the shirt. You can just, like, look at his shirt, dude. Give you some cheat. Nice. Okay? Give it a go. All right. So those of you who have forgotten how to factor or just need a little extra help, remember this is A times C. So if we think of A, B, and C, A is in front of X squared, B is in front of X, C is, is the constant. So 1 times 20 is 20. Two things to multiply to make 20 and add up to our B term, which is 9. Pay attention, please. 4 times 5. So when I put this together, that's x plus 4, x plus 5, and you need to make sure you divide by a, however a is 1, so it's not going to change anything. What does x equal here? 4 and 5. Negative, negative 4, four and, five. and here? Negative 5. Negative 5. Those are my zeros. Yes. Okay. So remember what we did last chapter. Okay, that's our factoring piece. Okay. Now, you should be able to see how this stuff starts piecing together. We find, we factor, we find the zeros, we plot them, we can quickly graph it. So that's what you're doing in this bottom part here. Use the zeros to graph. So you have to first, like on number nine, you have to first factor it. Okay? So, number nine, off you go, factor it. Okay, Vincent, what goes here? Negative 10. Done. Okay, Mercedes. Negative 3 there. Okay, Cassie. Negative 5 by negative or positive 2. Yeah, okay. So that tells me f of x is equal to x minus 5. And x plus 2. Good. Logan, what do you get here? Five. Good. So five and negative two. We need to cross the x-axis at five and negative two. All right. So I've got at least where my zeros are. I now need to find out where my axis of symmetry is. I don't know why I have that line in there yet. Okay. Where's my axis of symmetry? Well, it's add them up, divide by 2. What do we get? What did you get? 2.5? That's negative 3, right? Or positive 3 divided by 2. One and a half. Okay. X equals three halves. Axis of symmetry. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my graph there. I've got there. I'm going to put in my three halves or one and a half. I'm going to put in my five. I'll put in my negative two. Now I need to find the vertex. Okay, so I need to find f of 3 halves. So that's going to be 3 halves squared. So this may, some of you are, I saw putting this into your calculator. So 3 halves squared minus 3 times 3 halves minus 10. Plugging that in, what do you get? Yeah. 
Anyone put it in? Go for it. No? Okay. Uh, we got the middle. But we need to find out where our vertex anchors. So right now we know a vertex of one and a half or three halves. Sarah? Negative 13.75? Yeah, I think it's I think it's negative twelve point two five. All right, so I'm going to make this negative eighteen down here. I'm going to go down two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and a quarter, which is right there. And I'm going to start my graph. Where what's my y-intercept, by the way? A y-intercept is always the c term, negative 10, which gives me another point over here, reflecting it this way. So now as I start graphing this, this goes down, it hits that point, it's that point, bends back up. Got a bit of a messed up curve there. Okay. All right. Hey, your assignment today is to finish the page 268 and get, you need to spend time at least factoring numbers 10, 11, and 12. Okay. So number 10 should be easy for you. 268, 269.